This is complete trash. She is definitely the fashion queen of this season. I am not getting why she's still there. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Belgique, season two, episode three, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Now, before we get into the runway, let's talk about the challenge. The girls are lucky that I am not rating this challenge because girl, it needed help. But we are a fashion review show and we will only be reviewing the runway. And this week on the runway, the theme is Art Nouveau. I kind of like this theme. It is a original theme. It is a new theme, something we haven't seen on Drag Race and on any franchise before. We've seen them do art, uh, but not Art Nouveau specifically. And it was interesting because I didn't really know so much about Art Nouveau. So I actually could take pause and thought, what would I do? Because it wasn't the first art style that came to my mind. Personally, I'm more of a like a, a graffiti type of bitch, but we can get into some fine art, why not? But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into these queens. First up, it's Alvida. And Alvida is coming out in this sort of like teal, turquoisey, corseted top and this red flowy skirt paired with red gloves and all of the ornate details. She's paired it with this crown and ginger hair. Immediately, Alvida is coming out with a bang. She said that, you know what? I'm gonna be Art Nouveau. I'm gonna be the first queen and I'm gonna show you how it's done. This screams Art Nouveau and you know, you just Google Art Nouveau and this is exactly what you would see. This really ornate detailing with these gold, these beautiful colors mixed in together. On top of it, she decided to do it in this velvety material, which just makes everything look so much rich and opulent, which is the Art Nouveau style. She decided to pair it with this lantern, I have no idea what the lantern means. If somebody knows, leave a comment down below. But you know what? I still kind of like it because it gives you a little accessory and something to play with. So it kind of works for the whole thing. All in all, I think this is a very strong first start. And I'm not surprised because it's Alvida and Alvida has been turning up these runways. All in all, this is going to be a fab. Next up, it's Madame Yoko. And Madame Yoko is coming out in this beautiful emerald green ball gown. And she's got a lot of like the gold detailing. She's holding her pet peacock. And then she takes her peacock and she puts it on her head and the peacock becomes her headpiece. Oh my God, genius. First of all, this is amazing. This is the best Madame Yoko has looked all season. And you can definitely see that she thought about it from head to toe. Sometimes Madame Yoko has been missing it with some of the accessorizing and the way she does things, but this one was really thought through. From that hair to the dress to the arm piece that becomes a headpiece, it was immaculately done. I love this green color with these golds. It's got a really nice contrast to it. And I like that it's a ball gown because it's giving you a different shape. Madame Yoko is a very tiny person so giving her a little bit of volume a little bit more presence definitely helps it seems that the judges disagree with me because they were saying oh tool is not very art nouveau and i'm like girl i don't care do you see her do you see how good she looks uh what the hell are you talking about this was just super well done it is very classical but classical done in a new way and that's what we like to see all in all i love this dress and it is definitely going to be a fab next up it's Star, and Star is coming out in this white tunic dress with embroidery details on her arms, big necklaces, and big hair. Girl, what the f is going on here? This is complete trash. I'm sorry, I've been trying to hold my tongue with Star because Star is a legend in the drag scene, and everybody is so excited to see her on this season, and she is that staple drag queen. But girl, you're giving me this. All of the young queens are outdoing you. This is nowhere close to what it should be. It is a very plain, very droopy, very baggy dress. She says that it's all about the embroidery on the arms that took her two days to do. And I'm like, you know what? I applaud you. 
I applaud you because you did embroidery and that is super hard and cool. But this is dry race. This is TV. We want that big aha moment. And that aha moment we didn't get. This little bitty embroidery doesn't go anywhere. If you're going to do it, you should have done it all over the place. And you know what? Unfortunately, you don't get bonus points for doing it yourself. You could have paid somebody to do it. I'm just saying. I just think that her time would have been spent doing something else. On top of it, like I say every week with Star, she has a styling problem. I don't know why she had this giant necklace that was super jewelry with this kind of tunicky dress. She was giving me a little bit of a woman running in the flowers and that could have been a look, but then why do you have all this crazy jewelry on you? You really need to edit. And then let's talk about the hair. The hair is big and boisterous and over the top, which we love, but it just feels messy. If you're gonna do a big wig like that, why not make it like a beautiful, like blonde, curly wig that gave you a little bit more of like that Grecian goddess sort of feel with a flower crown in her hair. I think you would have sold it. Added some details to the bottom of her tunic, like put the embroidery all over it and you would have got somewhere. It just feels too little. The fact that she was safe on this episode is beyond me. Clearly some of the judges have some favoritism because I am not getting why she's still there. I mean, I do get why she's still there. She's a legend, that's why she's still there. But honestly, she has not been turning it up this season and I'm very disappointed. All in all, if you didn't guess, it is 100% gonna be a drab from me. Next up is Chloe Clark. And Chloe Clark is coming out in this big, boisterous, two-tier, pink sort of dress with this teal headpiece and auburn hair. She definitely got the Art Nouveau memo and is pulling all of the different references. On top of it, can we look at how stunning she looks? Now, there's one thing that you cannot deny about Chloe Clark. It is that she is definitely the fashion queen of this season. And honestly, they need to keep her on just to be giving us fashion because some of these queens really need help, but Chloe Clark is not one of them. I will say that I do find it a little bit hard to watch Chloe because of her French. It is not my favorite. Her accent is really killing me sometimes. That being said, the fashion and what she's bringing to the show is so needed. It is so at another level compared to the other queens. She is really giving you that rich bitch, I know what I'm talking about, fantasy, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. I do think that Chloe Clark is gonna struggle on some of those acting challenges, but that's for a future episode. Talking about the runways, there's nobody that's gonna touch her and she looks freaking amazing. All in all, this is a fab, 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 fab. Next up, it's Morphe. And Morphe has decided to do Art Nouveau in her own way and coming out as this sort of Tiffany lamp. Now, I love that Morphe chooses these ideas and these cop sets that are so original and so unique. And a lamp is a really cool way to interpret Art Nouveau. This Tiffany lamp has become iconic, so why not do it? The problem I have is that we've seen lamps done on Drag Race before, and we've seen them done a million times better than this. My mind immediately goes to Sminty Drop on Drag Race UK, or even Marina Summers on Dry Grace Philippines. And this lamp in comparison to those looks so basic. I think that the concept is there, but she is missing it on execution. And I think that that's what's been going on with Morphe all season. Personally, I love the way her mind works. She's very creative, very genius. And I love that her drag is completely different from everybody else's. Um, I just don't think she has the skills or experience yet to really pull off her big ideas and concepts. And this is just another one of those reasons. Great idea, but besides this thing on her head, the rest of the outfit is really plain and boring and just honestly doesn't really work. And the thing about Morphe is she said that this is the most beautiful she's ever looked and that scares me even more. The fact that you think this is the most beautiful you've ever looked is kind of scary because it's not that beautiful. <laughs> Oof. All in all, if you hadn't guessed, this is definitely gonna be a drab for me. <laughs> Next up is Gabbana, and Gabbana is coming out as the little ballerina in the jewelry box. She is in head to toe gold with all the little gold details and this beautiful makeup. 
This is a complete transformation for Gabbana, and I honestly didn't even recognize her at first. She is definitely pulling a character, definitely pulling in a different direction, and definitely giving you versatility. All in all, Gabbana looks stunning. I love this version of her. It is completely different from what she's done in the past. The only issue I have with Gabbana is that every week she's giving us something completely different. Now, a lot of people will say that that is great. She's showing versatility, she's showing drag. Personally, I like to have a little bit of a red thread to her looks. I wanna know what her particular drag aesthetic style is. And right now, every week she's transforming into a different drag style. Yes, this look is gorgeous and beautiful, but what makes it Gabbana? What makes it something that only she can do? And that's the part that I'm missing with Gabbana is that little uniqueness it left in it. But that is just an overall critique for Gabbana. But besides that, she looks stunning, she looks amazing, and I'm never gonna fault anybody for looking this good. And that is why for Miss Gabbana, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is giving you gold, baby! She's giving you head-to-toe gold. She's got like this gold detailed top piece with this gold droopy dress. She's definitely giving you a little bit of that architectural, but with that little bit of softness. Paired it with red ombre hair. Oh, is that a theme that I'm fearing? That's three queens with red hair, but she looks amazing. I love this sort of architectural detail. It's very sculptural, it's very interesting, it's very ornate. It's definitely giving me Art Nouveau. And I also like that she's mixed this like hard part with the soft part of the dress that's really flowy. If I was gonna change one thing, I wish that this top part was made out of a different material, not fabric. Maybe something a little bit more sturdy to really play off of that hard and soft. But other than that, all the details are there and she's definitely giving you a vibe and she's definitely walking the runway like she owns it. And as she owns it, she should. Now, I didn't know anything about Miss Lulu Velvet before watching this show. And you know what? She's becoming some competition. She's coming out of it. I was not expecting that for her. And I love that she is becoming that bitch. All in all, this looks pretty good. And I really don't have very many comments. And that is why she is definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, it's La Verve, and La Verve is coming out in this sort of white tunic dress with these dark petals and this white makeup. She's got white eyes and white hair. As she struts down the runway, she tilts her head and this giant headpiece comes off of it. And it's really giving you that ooh moment, or at least that's what she was probably going for. The first thing that I'll say is that I love that La Verve knows who her drag aesthetic is, who her character is, and she always plays off of it. This sort of spooky, ooky version really works for her because that's who she is as a queen. I initially thought that it was a little bit more like tarot card and I was like, that works, that works for me. Now, this is the difference between someone like La Verve and someone like Gabbana. Gabbana comes out and she gives you these amazing looks that look so good, but I'm always questioning what is her drag aesthetic. La Verve, on the other hand, definitely doesn't have the best look but she always has her drag personality put into it. It's definitely got her own twist on the theme. And this is seen here. Is it the worst look on the runway? No. Is it the best? Also no. To me, this is really middle of the road. I think that the idea is quite there. She could have just done a little bit more to make it feel a little bit bigger. This headpiece on the back of it, genius, love that. Let's add some details to the tunic itself. It just felt like plain fabric. I wish she had maybe like some dark flowers that were like maybe ombre up the bottom of it. I think it would have just really helped ground it a little bit because she got that darkness at the bottom. So just, just bring it up a little bit, add a little bit of detail, and I think it would have went a long way. All in all, it's a little bit of middle in the road for me and I can go either way, but I'm gonna have to go with a soft, Drab. Sorry, man. And that is it for this week's runway. Thank God this runway came up and it came on on episode three because we needed a save after episode two because that was a little bit of a train wreck. If you didn't watch my review on episode two, click over here and you can watch that. But enough about that. Let's get into who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... Oh. 
I guarantee you saw this one coming. I was very vocal about my opinions and maybe a little bit too vocal. Hopefully she doesn't hate me when I do eventually meet her or if I do meet her because she maybe not want to meet me after this. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positives. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week has to go to Chloe Clark. Like I said before, she's the undisputed queen of the runway. She is the fashion queen and she looks stunning from head to toe yet again. And you can't fault that bitch. So that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the series and we're getting close. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.